to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. This is the day that the Lord has made, and the Bible says that we rejoice and we are glad in it. Bishop, thank you. Thank you. Honor to you and your wife. Let's give Solomon Lange a big, big, big God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Father, speak to my heart in the name of Jesus. Can you open your mouth and just pray in one minute? Speak to me. Go ahead and pray. Shila Kapato Sekepratiya. I obtain understanding of your word alongside the grace to walk in the reality of that which will be taught this morning. Change my life by your word. Don't be tired, you're praying. I bow, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my hand. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my hand. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, you lift my hand. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3. While standing, we'll be seated shortly. Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3. Second Chronicles 15 3 it says now for a long season Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law I shared it back at home on Sunday that there are three components that if absent in a territory that territory is in trouble number one the knowledge of the true God you can have gods but any territory that does not have an opportunity to encounter the true God is in trouble number two any territory that lacks teaching priests 
without a teaching priest there cannot be understanding and comprehension how shall they hear without a preacher and where will there be a preacher except he be sent and then number three without law there has to be principles by which society is governed by any society that has an encounter with the true god a teaching priest and principles by which the citizens live by is a territory that will always experience the power and the grace of god we have come to learn we have come to rise the lord will do us good in jesus name please be seated now i understand this session even though it's still a general session but i think it's more uh, more particular to the ministers so please permit my bias when you find me just talking as though i'm speaking to only ministers of the gospel it's an honor to serve the purposes of the kingdom and the lord will give us understanding yesterday um we looked a bit at jesus reintroducing him as the embodiment of the entirety of the glory of god the bible tells us that jesus the son of the living god came as the express image of the invisible god hallelujah the principal channel through which god communicates and reveals himself to men is through jesus hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 and 3 says god who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us by the prophets he says hath in this last day spoken to us by his son whom he had appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds he says who being the brightness of his glory so who is god's glory jesus the brightness of his glory and then the express image of his person he says he upholds all things by the word of his power this is jesus the brightness of the glory of god praise the name of the lord just take down the volume a little so that we can have thank you so we considered reintroducing jesus i did state yesterday that the foundation and the epicenter of the faith life is jesus more than breakthroughs more than miracles yesterday was a general call to return back to focus that jesus becomes the object of our pursuit the object of our worship everything we do in this kingdom is derived from him our worship ministry is derived from him hallelujah so this morning i want to now begin to really teach on the glory and um the lord grant us understanding in jesus name psalm 63 let's start from there hmm. psalm 63 oh god the psalmist is praying thou art my god he says early will i seek you my soul thirsted for you my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is he says to see your power and to see your glory as i have seen in the sanctuary this is a very powerful scripture please follow the discourse carefully he's praying now and the bible gives us a peep into the content of a man's prayer O oh lord verse one he says thou art my god and then he says for as long as it is your glory that i desire there is timing in this pursuit i cannot seek you every time to really be able to find your glory and your power in its full essence i will take advantage of time he says my soul longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is verse 2 he says this is what i desire to see your power and your glory but then he makes a statement 
he says as i have seen in the sanctuary do you know the meaning of this when i went to church i saw the sick healed i saw manifestations of your power that i have not been able to capture in my life so i want you to replicate what i saw in your house in my life i want to see your power and your glory no longer just in the assembly i want to see it in my life that i do not have to stroll down into a building before i encounter your glory i want to literally be an embodiment of that glory that i do not have to wait for a conference and a special man of god coming from another region and so he says god i want to see your power and your glory as i have seen in a sanctuary hallelujah i explained to us yesterday that the glory of god the is the 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 latin is the word gloria the hebrew many expressions of the word but more particularly is from the hebrew word kabod the greek is doxa all of them refer to the same thing the wealth or the weightiness is an attempt to measure the weight the essence of a person it was it was a word that was used in ancient times when it had to do with um the measurement of gold and jewelries if you weighed it you could see that the heavier it was you see that it carried that value so glory is an attempt to describe the all-surpassing value and excellence of a thing and in this case God himself are we together now that means for you to know the glory of a thing you must give that thing an opportunity to display its excellence you want to know the glory of a car and why the car is a hundred million you have to give an opportunity to explore all the features within that car that make it greater than a car of two million or three million are we together now yes there are times you go to the market to buy material and they will tell you this material is ten thousand and this one is fifty thousand and usually you will ask them why and then they will tell you you try to tear this one you try to do this they will now begin to explain so the glory of god is an attempt to show the all surpassing power the excellence the weightiness the value that means the more you see and encounter the glory of god the more you love him the more you serve him the more you live for him because now you are aware of these values that make him god indeed when you worship him now it will not just be from a religious standpoint but you are aware this was what happened to isaiah in chapter 6 and verse 1 remember the bible says in the year that king uzziah died i isaiah saw the lord and then he said he was upon a throne and the train of his robe filled the temple now you know it better than i do that in those days the priestly robe the, the the length of the train of the robe was an attempt to show just like a woman has you know how women have during their weddings and they have that thing just flowing down the train of his robe so the length determined the power the extent and the superiority of the priest and in this case he said that train that followed him filled the entire temple when he saw it verse 2 please give it to us it says above it stood the seraphims each one had six wings and they covered their feet and they did fly when he saw this next verse please the bible says that they cried holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of the whole earth is full of the whole earth full of his glory what does this mean the whole earth is a testament that he is mighty everything from creation the whole earth you don't even need to look at heaven to know his glory the earth alone is enough educator all you need to do is to look at the seas look at the plants look at mankind isn't it incredible that when you eat you don't instruct your mouth on what to do you don't talk to your systems they were designed for years from the beginning of your life till the end you never have to give them an instruction because somebody already spoke once in that word he says the earth is full of your glory that means you want to know my glory don't just long for encounters in heaven alone even if you focus in the earth there are enough things to show you that i am glorious 
Are we together now? And then Isaiah broke down and said, Woe is me, I am undone, a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amidst a people of unclean lips, and so on and so forth. So, the essence of God's glory, please look up. The prophet, when we have to do with the subject of the glory of God, the prophet is in the revelation, the manifestation of the glory, not just the awareness. Whether or not you are aware, the glory of God is there. Is that true? But then, it is when the glory of God is revealed that it now profits us. It is the revelation or the manifestation of the glory of God that the saints are blessed and the name of Jesus is lifted. I'll give you an instance. The power of God is an aspect of His glory. But that power does not profit you until it is put on display. Is that true? When the sick are now healed, at that point of manifestation, you can now see the glory of God revealed. So, the whole idea of the glory of God is not just to be aware that God has attributes that make him glorious, but he seeks that that glory be manifested, is the word doxazo, and a displaying, a revealing of what was hidden. For instance, when a bride comes on her wedding day, usually she veils herself. The intention is not to remain veiled. Is that true? Her veil creates suspense. There is attraction. By that veiling of herself, you, you look forward to seeing how she is dressed. But a time must come in that ceremony when they tell the man, you can now unveil your bride. When he unveils the bride, they will ask him, is she the one? Is ah, Absolutely. This is her. And then he smiles and everybody rejoices. They now appreciate the splendor and the beauty. Remember, before she put on that veil, she took out time to dress to look beautiful. Are we together now? So there is an unveiling of the glory of God that creation is waiting for. Now, they have a right to doubt God because our assignment is to stop them from doubting God and until there is a manifestation of that glory in and through our lives we cannot blame creation for taking God like a joker the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 reading from verse 18 I reckon the word reckon means I come to terms with the fact that our sufferings of this present time it says it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be every time you see glory you see it with revelation our sufferings the momentary constraints that we go through is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us 19 says for the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of god another version says creation is waiting for god to reveal those who his sons truly are so every time we talk about the glory of God, the power, the wisdom, the excellence, it has to be revealed. Ephesians chapter 3, Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and he was teaching them the precepts, he was teaching them doctrine. And when you get to verse 3, Paul, Ephesians 3 and we'll read from verse 3. He says, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery so what he was teaching them he was giving them the source of his information that do not find it strange when you see that i did not walk with jesus as one of the disciples and yet i am communicating deep mysteries that are even so difficult for the apostles who were with him he says how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as i wrote a four words verse four it says whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ and then he gives it an information he says which in other ages was not made to the sons of men but now is revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit go to nine the emphasis is verse 10 but let's go to verse 9 it says to make all men see this is powerful paul is saying Part of that equipping that was given to me is a grace that can make any man see what I'm saying. Regardless educational background, there is a grace that makes all men see. And if you are a preacher, you must obtain grace from God to carry this grace. Otherwise, you are going to be teaching for a long time and there will not be understanding. There is a grace that makes all men see. Please keep this scripture. 
Remember Jesus was walking. God bless you. Let's celebrate, Venerable. Thank you. Remember there was two men. The Bible tells us that two men were walking the streets of Emmaus. Are we students of scripture? And then the Bible says Jesus was walking in the midst of them. They had proximity with the truth, but they were not transformed by it. Then when he sat at table with them, the Bible says he broke the bread and their eyes were opened and then he left them so just because you are around the truth does not mean you understand it no he said understandest what thou readest that's what he told the utopian enoch so to make all men see listen what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in god who created all things in christ please read verse 10 if you're a christian ready one to read to the intent what does that mean hold on that means everything I was given is for this cause. To the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church. The church, the body of Christ, the manifold, many-sided wisdom of God. Just stop there. This is an aspect of his glory. He wants this aspect of his glory called his wisdom to be revealed. The wisdom that dumbfounds the wisdom of principalities and powers. And he wants it to be made known by the church. That means any other entity that tries to reveal the glory of God will not do a good job. It is only the church that has the ability to reveal the glory of God in a way that satisfies the heart of the Father. This is why he built his church. Remember we discussed it yesterday. Who do men say that I the son of God am? And he said, you are Elijah, you are this. He says, um, Peter speaking, he says, thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, blessed be thou, Peter, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And he says, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build. So the church was not invented. The church did not just appear. The church was built. And it was built with such a formidable architecture. Listen carefully, please. That the architecture of the church was built with such dexterity that if allowed, if we go back to the pattern of that architect, he said the church will be so formidable, the gate of hell. That means the test of the strength of the church is how powerless the gate of hell should be in the presence of the church. But as we see right now, we need to go back to that architecture because something is grossly wrong. The gates of hell seem to have a free cause. Regardless all that the Bible tells us God is, regardless all the Bible tells us Jesus has done, I will build my church and I will build it such that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Please write this down. God is a God of patterns. God is a God of patterns. We're discussing issues of the glory now. God is a God of patterns. What is a pattern? Please look up. A pattern is a blueprint. A pattern is a formula. A pattern is a modus operandi, a model. Now, the way God works is that he does not do the same thing twice. The first time God does anything, he builds it and leaves a pattern for its reproduction. Is that true? So, for instance, God made Adam, man, dark earth. And then out of that man, he pulled out a woman. Is that true? And then in that process he built a pattern that we have known today to be reproduction or procreation that means every time you want more men you don't need to start crying and say god we need more men all you need to do is find the pattern allocated for the continuity of that process please follow carefully when god wanted to bring agriculture and expand vegetation across the earth what he did was he planted the first trees by himself but he created a pattern that in every tree there was a seed in it is that true and that every seed carries trees that we do not even know so every time you want more trees what do you do you subscribe to the pattern that brings for increase are we together now 
this is very powerful and then when it had to do with the atmosphere and the environment he created patterns today we know those patterns in our civilization as circles so there is the what do we call it there is the rainy season and the dry season circles they make for continuity is that true there is bi biology and agriculture and physics and chemistry they have all kinds of circles how things recycle themselves to start afresh again these are all divine patterns please listen follow very carefully that means that when you want to experience the glory of god it is not only god that you will seek you will have to understand his patterns every manifestation of god's glory has a spiritual pattern allocated to it if you want to see salvation there is a pattern allocated for it what is the pattern for salvation romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 is the biblical pattern for the administration of this dimension of god's glory called his salvation that if it is salvation the first thing that starts is the word there must be the presence of the word for salvation to happen salvation does not happen just by emotions it is at the instance of the word and that that word must find expression in your heart and it must find expression in your lips is that true and it must be a word of faith or the word of faith next verse it says if you confess this is the biblical pattern for salvation if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and you believe in your heart that he was raised up from the dead for your justification it says thou shalt be saved for the pattern is in verse 10 with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation that means i can i can know you are saved if i see the pattern that you followed is that true because of adherence to this spiritual pattern today there are about six 2.6 billion people who have subscribed to the government of jesus christ regardless church regardless crusade ground some people obey this pattern by the sea others obey this pattern in church others obey this pattern in their bedroom regardless location the moment the pattern was adhered to that dimension of glory was revealed please follow me very carefully therefore the patterns of god are forerunners of his glory the patterns of god forerun his glory please understand this the patterns of god forerun his glory every time you see an absence of the manifestation of the glory of god in the life of an individual or in the life of a church a pastor a people the absence of that glory is a report card is telling you that there is no thorough comprehension of the spiritual pattern allocated for the manifestation of that glory amazing and because the glory of god is multifaceted you can find the pattern for an area and not find the pattern for another area it's the reason why we continue to be students in the school of the spirit searching for the spiritual patterns by the help of the holy ghost that will help us represent the glory of god in its fullness listen i can find the spiritual pattern that reveals the glory of god as divine health in my life and so when you see my life you see my life free of sickness free of infirmity but i may do so bad in finances because the pattern allocated for my health will not automatically make for my finances i would have to go and learn by the spirit you see why he gave us the holy spirit thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done The father would not trust your getting into this revelation without the holy spirit so he left us the holy spirit to guide us this is what jesus taught us he said i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he says he will guide you into all truth that means you can have some 
and not have others his assignment is to guide you into the entire body of truth are we still together this morning so please write this down that the patterns of god are forerunners forerunners to the manifestation of his glory you want to see the glory of god in your life haven't understood what the glory of god is the multifaceted expression of everything that makes god god is his glory exodus chapter 25 now the way the bible works is that as you know um god works in types and shadows similitudes adumbrations we call them that means that patterns are acted out and in those stories or in those scenarios we can fish out the patterns and now begin to use them for instance how many of you know that if i want to reproduce this same church in lagos all i need is what the pattern the architectural plan is that true any architect who is a true architect accredited should be able to produce with 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 digital precision this auditorium so if i want 10 of this auditorium i don't need to carry this building moving around i don't even need to just snap it is possible for the architect to never be here physically and yet reproduce it with uncanny mastery because he has a pattern that means what we should be crying for is not really the manifestation of god's glory the manifestation of god's glory is an effect what we should really cry for is to know god and to understand his patterns so the bible says let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength it says let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me hallelujah are we together exodus chapter 25 this was the building of the tabernacle let's look at verse 9 moses is now instructed to replicate the tabernacle in heaven and whilst moses was caught up he had the privilege to see to peep into the heavenly tabernacle now he's reproducing what he saw in heaven but it did not just happen just by his sight here's what he said according to all that i showed thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof even so shall ye make it my goodness may god give us understanding in jesus name do you know what this is god wants to tabernacle or he wanted to tabernacle with the people but he said you must reproduce the environment of the throne room within that space so that i can be comfortable to be with you and not even know the difference whether i am in the throne room or with you now we are not here to glorify satan but let me teach you something that will bless you the devil can never have access to any aspect of your life until through ignorance or deception he forces you to create something in your life that is a simulation of the current environment of the spirit that comes to you watch this if, the, if a native doctor gives you a charm, now you just believe that he conjured all kinds of things. It looks like just a small substance he gave you. What he gave you was the habitation of the spirit whose assistance you are looking for. Now he gives you that thing and he says, take it home. Drop it anywhere. When you drop it there, you now, that pattern you have created starts attracting the spirit component. Are you getting the point now that spirit comes and he's comfortable to live in your habitation this is the whole idea of idol worship to simulate a pattern that makes whatever dimension of that spirit comfortable now god <laughs> god is giving moses an instruction moses you want my presence you want my glory leave the issue of glory let me teach you how this thing works in the realm of the spirit now i'm going to give you an idea of how the tabernacle in heaven looks like be diligent look at how he kept reminding him if it's my glory you want i must check my patterns first now he says according to all that i show you after the pattern of the tabernacle he says even so shall you make it let's go to verse 40. he says and they make verse 40 25 verse 40 not 10 40 
Yes. It says, and look. Can you imagine? He now comes the second time to insist. And look that thou made them after their pattern, which was shown you on the mount. That means, Moses, don't invent your formula. You will not get me that way. Everything you saw, reproduce it exactly. Now go to chapter 40 and verse 16. Chapter 40 and verse 16. Same Exodus. The Bible says, Thus did Moses, according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so did he. Verse 33. Same scripture. 33. The Bible says, God kept watching. He kept supervising. Moses is getting to the final stage of the construction now. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar. And he set up the hanging of the court gate. Full stop. Then the Bible says, so Moses finished the work according to pattern. As a result, 34. The Bible says, then a cloud. Now that the pattern was kept, then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. And the glory of the lord came and did what filled the tabernacle next verse it says and moses was not even able to enter into the tent of the congregation because of the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the lord filled the temple uh-huh next verse it says and when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle the children of israel went onward all in all their journeys but if the cloud were not taken up they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up for the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day and fire was on it by night in the sight manifestation now it didn't happen in the realm of the spirit everybody saw it in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys provided the pattern was kept they kept seeing the glory provided the patterns were kept they kept seeing the glory The patterns of God forerun his glory. The patterns of God forerun his glory. A tailor can be given a measurement without seeing the man of God. Let's assume you want to sew a wonderful garment to give Bishop and his dear wife. You do not need to even have the tailor see them. The tailor seeing them is an added advantage. But whether or not he sees them, all you need to do is be accurate enough to get their measurements and you can give the tailor and within days the man prepares a nice dress and literally bishop can wear it without testing it and come on stage if the tailor was that good in keeping the pattern the pattern spiritual patterns are so powerful they control the manifestation of the glory of god behind the strange dimensions of the exploits of the saints a compliance to spiritual patterns there is a spiritual pattern that governs the manifestation of the anointing the anointing does not just happen because the Holy Ghost is there there is a spiritual pattern that governs influence and access people do not just listen to you because you have something to say there is a spiritual pattern that governs the continuity of your spiritual fire Are we blessed? So if you want to see the manifestation of the glory of God, we must, like students of scripture, return to the Bible and find out. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Will you show us the ancient path? Lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest. There is a pattern that turns a disciple to an apostle. Jesus did not just come and say, I hereby make you apostles. No. As powerful as he is, he subjected them through this methodical system of growth. 
everyone priest here everyone reverend venerable and even our bishops here would tell you there was a pattern is that true you cannot become a bishop in the anglican communion for instance without knowing certain things no matter how ignorant you are there is a there is a necessary pattern that must be followed now i tell you the reason why many people in the body of christ and in church and in ministry do not experience the glory of god it's not because god is hoarding his glory no do you know that in john 17 and verse 1 let's read john 17 verse 1 the only way the father is glorified is when the sons are glorified jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour has come please read with me glorify thy son why that thy son may glorify thee this is a principle of shared dominion theologically speaking no object glorifies itself you invest your glory in another and the excellence of that displays how you get your glory so the father cannot glorify himself he invests his glory in the son in the excellence of the son is the glory of the father the son cannot glorify himself so he invests his glory in the church so that the church in partnership with the holy spirit brings glory to the son are you seeing how it works now the church cannot glorify themselves so our dominion over the cosmos principalities and powers is how the church is glorified so creation dominion over creation is how the church is glorified as the church is glorified the son is glorified as the son is glorified the father is glorified you know how powerful the son is by looking at the moon the moon has no light on its own but it depends on the sun and there are times you can see the moon halfway it does not mean the sun lost its power is that the moon was shifting away from the sun it's not the fault of the sun there are times that the moon comes close to the sun and you see the brilliance it can turn night to almost look like day so if my life and your life does not capture the full essence of the glory of god it does not mean god stopped being glorious if taraba state and jalingo does not reflect the glory of god all wise we must go back to investigate what kind of patterns are we subscribing to because it is through the patterns listen i learned this years ago because i said there has to be a way to explain these gaps in our christian experience i carried my bible and i read my bible i've had the honor and the privilege of reading this book that i so love with my life from cover to cover many times and i saw the miracles the wonders i was taught this in church again but we never could see it again i saw three thousand souls saved in one crusade that was unplanned for and yet we preach and at the end of our preaching with lots of obvious sinners only one person perhaps just strolls carelessly and it's clear the person did not even know what he was doing. Something is wrong with the pattern. How about praying for the sick? Imagine how passionate we pray for the sick. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord touch you. And you can see that the sick people have faith. They are coming to your vicinity is already enough that they have faith. But nothing happens and we live disappointed. I hope you don't feel insulted. We are challenging ourselves. How about the blessings of the Lord? Oh, we speak and we decree and declare, which is truth, that the blessings of Abraham have become us. We declare that we are the seed of Abraham. And it is true because Galatians 3, chapter 29, or chapter 3 and verse 29 says it. It says, if ye be Christ, then are ye heirs. Is that true? Yes. It says, Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And yet, you find out that a territory can be so ravaged by lack and poverty, including those who stand as priests.
how about the prevalence of decadence in the society have you seen respectfully speaking that the more churches we have in the territory the more untouched the territory is at all whether it is the moral fabric the spiritual conviction just pick a believer at random and interview that believer and you'll be left in tears at the end of your discussion so we need to re-examine the patterns the problem is not that we are bad the problem is that the pattern is wrong no matter how sincere I am now if you ask me to prepare a meal what do you love in Jalingo? choir don't embarrass me now what do you love to eat in Jalingo? don't embarrass your people they will query you later on huh? plantain he said a label i hope i hope he's correct let's well let's use up they are looking at you and saying are you speaking on behalf of yourself or on behalf of all of us okay let's use rice for instance if you are to cook jollof rice how many of you know that sincerity does not produce jollof rice i can be a sincere man of god in fact i can even have the ingredients given to me free of charge but that does not guarantee then there are others if you ask me to cook for two or three people i may get it right but now you ask me to cook for everybody this one requires a level of mastery i can manage and conjure whatever and close the pot for two or three people but cooking for a crowd you cannot be an amateur to do that there are some women here if we say we want to eat now you just tell us give us three to four or five hours and we can guarantee that a meal will come that will glorify Jesus here. Are we together? That means there is a possibility that even though we are well-meaning and sincere people, love God with all our hearts, ministry may not work, even though we are sincere. You don't have to be fake to suffer. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You can be as sincere. The disciples of Jesus were sincere people. When he went up the Mount of Transfiguration, they saw this epileptic patient and they came as disciples, students of Jesus. They now tried to pray, to do what they were taught. And they were utterly disappointed. They were angry and when Jesus came, they said, what is this? Why couldn't we do this? Can I tell you this? There is nothing more frustrating than loving Jesus sincerely, knowing you are true and your heart is pure, and yet not able to reveal the glory of God to the extent that brings glory to Jesus. Many years ago, I prayed for the sick and nothing happened. I've loved Jesus my entire life. I ministered to people and nothing happened. I read my Bible and I said something has to be wrong. I began to read stories of men and women in scripture and even in modern history the bible archives them in hebrews 11 time will fail me it says to talk of gideon jephthah barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions women who received their dead back to life and i knew that something was wrong and i did not want to live in a lie making a lot of assumptions writing books about a concept that has not yet become a reality please follow me and in my desperation and my hunger one day i had a vision in that vision i saw a giant door very big door that looked like an ancient gate and then it was zoomed towards me and i found out that that door was made of many smaller doors the big door had many smaller doors and they were opening and closing and every time they opened light would just come like flashing a torchlight light would come out of those smaller doors and i noticed that on every of the small door there was one scripture that was written god was about to introduce me to something and then the door would open and light would come out of it and the holy spirit began to speak to me and he said, these doors represent possibilities in the kingdom. 
the light that comes from it is the grace to defend every truth that you see on that door that means every truth in this kingdom if you really find it there is a grace to defend its validity here and now when tl osborne found it he proved it when kenneth hagin found it he proved it when john knox found it he proved it the patriarchs when they found it they proved it today we claim to have found it and so we gather people like the fig tree and they come say now you found it and we round up by saying may the grace of our lord jesus christ very implicating scripture do you know what the grace of our lord jesus christ is then we even say the love of god and we know that the character of love is that it gives without restraint then we even say the fellowship of the holy spirit let it rest with you as you go with your trouble goodbye we recite this every week we recite this then we even add amen you know what amen is amen is let it be so let it manifest as preordained that's what amen means and so i made up my mind that i would have to become like a spiritual archaeologist to now begin to search these truths because if we cannot present the glory of god in its entirety we are going to lose a whole generation i assure you today there are options atheists came out and they said we, be, we don't believe in any god and they have created a, a semblance of evidences that we are yet to counter other religions have come to say listen this your jesus you are speaking about is just fanatism there are many gods and they've demonstrated that result with their life a herbalist is there sitting in one dark room and we keep laughing at them and telling members don't go to any herbalist and yet the last time the man went to the herbalist he bought a car in one month he went to the herbalist his wife got pregnant in two weeks he went to the herbalist he won an election and then he returns back to church and said just leave them and stay with jesus and they say i don't have a problem with jesus but where is the evidence that shows he's alive are we together i know you may think that you will never dapple your hands into evil until the day life pushes you and you try this in quote the jesus option and nothing happens and you are watching your wife dying and they tell you she has one more week to die this is why many testimonies in church did not come from church people only bring them to church because they don't want trouble with pastors they know where the testimonies came from sorry oh, you asked me to come and speak to you that is why members have their bibles they have charms they have some other books they have some other references and they operate them at random the most important thing is let me give god glory when it is done please take seriously what i'm saying including our congregations i've had the honor and the privilege by reason of ministry to pray for people sincerely and you cannot imagine results are powerful so everybody continues to go down financially and someone is watching another person bribe his way into blessings or into into uh, uh, wealth and abundance and yet you are saying listen you can walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity and step into the blessing of the lord and now the person is obeying you as a pastor his wife is suffering the children are suffering he's the firstborn among 12 families sooner or later they will love him and they'll say while you are doing your church thing there this is the reason why when we shout praise the lord people say hallelujah when we say you are blessed they say amen but even us we know they are mocking us because there is a track record of lack of results and evidence to this spiritual thing we do ah may god restore his glory in the name of jesus christ look at jesus 
who came as the manifestation of the glory of God. A woman had one encounter with him by the well. She was, the impact was so powerful, she could not keep quiet. She ran as a prostitute. Nobody asked her to be an evangelist. Why is evangelism hard today? Because we are not sure of what we are preaching. Evangelism was never supposed to be difficult in the presence of results. How do rumors spread? Rumors spread easily. Do you beg people to spread rumors? Do you beg people to spread bad news? As many as we are in this country, if a prominent man dies in less than 10 minutes, the whole Nigeria knows. How come the gospel has not gone that far? No evidence. No evidence. No evidence. A man will be in his bedroom discussing with the wife and one person will hear and in 30 minutes the whole Nigeria has had a discussion and yet the gospel that is preached every Sunday openly there are people who have not heard and are not interested and yet churches keep expanding conferences are being organized every week and every time I hope you understand that I'm saying this out of love it's not, it's not, it's not to be sarcastic but it's to call us 21st century end time ministry will need evidences if you really want to manifest the glory of God. We are diagnosing the problem and I'm showing you the extent of the damage that not understanding spiritual patterns is causing. We may not see it until your child gets up one day and says, you know what? I have watched you. Do you know that many lawless people in our nation and our environment today were children of pastors? Are you aware of that? You look at the American community, respectfully speaking. Many of the lawless people who are the principal promoters of evil and darkness, most of them started from church. But church disappointed them. There are many young people who will tell you right now as I'm watching, it's only my body that is here, my mind is no longer in church. But look at Jesus. He went up the mountain, people followed him. For three days, they refused to go home. He went by the sea, they followed him. To tell you it's not just about Jesus alone. Even the woman herself. She went and said, come see a man. And they, they knew this woman. And they saw the sudden transformation. They said, no, 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 no. We don't believe that Jesus, but we believe you. Let's go. And they came. When they sat with Jesus, one service was enough for their transformation. And today we have members 10 years and by the 11th year, you find out they were not born again. It's at the 11th year, they will come out for an altar call. When a guest minister comes somewhere, do you know how embarrassing it is to be that a man has been in the atmosphere, he was chairman of building committee, he was chairman of this, prayer and fasting he attended, is until someone now comes to preach. Then he now comes out. Are we blessed? I tell you what the diagnosis is. We desire the glory. The average believer knows or is aware of all the possibilities in scripture. If I ask you now, does God heal? Please help me. Does God heal? Does God bless? Does he lift men? Can he restore? Does God give speed? Can he give a barren woman children? Can he take the poor and put him in the, in the palace? Can he take someone from nothing and make him a great man? Question. You are aware. You are not in doubt. But why is it not happening? It is painful to know what should be and not have it manifest. It's like knowing every restaurant is open. You know where the restaurants are, but you are still hungry. You can even pass close to the restaurant. You know there's food in this restaurant now. They've told you food is ready. They wrote it clearly. And yet you are dying of hunger. In one minute while you are looking at me, can you just talk to the Lord before we continue? Lord, I am tired of Christianity as usual. There has to be something different in this conference. There has to be an encounter that manifests your glory. Your glory in a new dimension, in a way that compels all and sundry. 
to glorify Jesus. It says, let your light so shine, not before things, before men. He desires to see your light shine before men. It says that they may glorify your father. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we blessed? Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you.